Due to the continuous downturn of China's economy and the uncertain investment environment, many are hesitant to invest in China. Recently, an increasing number of multinational corporations have been moving production out of China to reduce risks, accelerating the exodus of foreign capital and companies from the country. Additionally, the flight of capital from China is speeding up, shifting from dried up capital inflows to more people desperately moving their funds out of the country. Following the disruptions of the value chain caused by the pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war, international multinationals are increasingly discussing shifting production locations. In search of potential large-scale relocations by these corporations, institutions like the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, Bank of Italy and Deutsche Bundesbank have recently conducted surveys inquiring about corporate supply chain risks. The central bank surveyed 65 globally operating large corporations, with 49% indicating they are seeking nearshoring or relocating their production bases closer to their sales points. Additionally, 42% of the respondents expressed a desire to friend shore some of their operations or move them to more favorable locations. An article in the European Central Bank's Economic Bulletin stated that most of these companies consider China as a source country or one of the source countries for their industry supply chain and nearly all view sourcing from China as a high risk move. Consequently, more multinational companies are shifting their focus to Southeast Asia, including Vietnam, India and Thailand, and are establishing new production bases there. Data on foreign investment in China reveals significant shifts. In 2022, foreign direct investments into China fell by 43% from the previous year amounting to approximately 190 billion US dollars. US official data shows that China's share of US goods imports dropped from a peak of 22% in 2017 to 17% in 2022. Data from China's state administration of foreign exchange also indicates that in the third quarter of this year, the indicator measuring foreign direct investment in China showed a deficit for the first time with a shortfall of 11.8 billion US dollars. This is the first negative value recorded since 1998. Concurrently, China's basic international balance recorded its second quarterly deficit since records began, amounting to 3.2 billion yuan, further diminishing foreign investors' confidence in investing in China due to its economic downturn. The 2023 Global Public Investor Survey published by the Official Monetary and Financial Institutions Forum also demonstrates a sharp decline in China's attractiveness to international investors. The report reveals that nearly 40% of large pension funds and sovereign wealth funds surveyed marked India as the most attractive emerging market. Less than a quarter chose China, with Brazil being equally popular, followed by Mexico. The report emphasizes India's attraction due to its relatively strong economic growth and demographic structure, while China continues to show a downward trend in these aspects, as well as becoming more closed to foreign investment. The report's content also indicates that international investors have never been so hesitant about investing in China. It states none of the funds surveyed are optimistic about China's economic prospects, nor do they expect that investing in Chinese assets will yield relatively higher returns. 73% of respondents highlight regulation and geopolitics as the main factors preventing them from starting or continuing investments in China. A respondent from an Asia-Pacific pension fund commented negatively on China's outlook, showing more enthusiasm for other emerging economies. The research director of Australia's future fund, Craig Thorburn, confirmed that they have reduced investments in China due to increased government intervention in market sectors and ongoing challenges in China's economic growth model. Aside from multinational corporations and international investors losing confidence in the Chinese market, International Business Association have also stepped in to warn various multinational corporations directly. According to a recent Financial Times report, the Business Europe, comprising direct members from 35 countries, stated that China's revised anti-espionage law and data laws make the relationship between Europe and China challenging. Foreign enterprises might find it difficult to invest in China, pushing for a decoupling between China and Europe. Business Europe's Deputy Director General Louisa Santos 
believes that difficult choices must be made if there are concerns about being jailed in China for sharing data with Europe, potentially leading to decoupling, which everyone hopes to avoid. Regarding China's latest anti-espionage law, which took effect in China on July 1st this year, it classifies some business information as state secrets. This is information foreign enterprises operating in China must understand. This could lead to issues for foreign accounting firms or market research companies operating in China, potentially facing crackdowns. An associate professor at the University of Technology, Sydney, Fen Chong Yi, shared his views with the media, stating that the issue of China's new legal threats to foreign businesses is not new. Many multinational corporations in China have faced this problem before. Unlike Japan and the United States, which have not paid much attention to this issue because they have quietly moved out of China or shifted their companies to India and Southeast Asia or relocated back to their home countries and therefore are not affected. Fung continued, this complaint mainly comes from European businesses as some do not want to give up the Chinese market. For instance, German companies might still consider additional investments, but they have to face the threat and harm posed by these new Chinese laws. The consequence is that China's anti-espionage law becomes a tightening spell for their investments and business operations in China. China can use this law as a threat at any time, putting all foreign investors who continue to invest at risk of being incarcerated, offending criminal law and being arrested in China. Their continued investment in China may be because they still harbor illusions, hoping the Chinese government will abandon the implementation of these laws. The situation in China with its unclear legal boundaries essentially places foreign investors and businesses who have been engaged in Chinese market for decades in a perpetual state of legal jeopardy. To operate successfully in China, particularly to achieve profitability, it becomes almost a necessity to navigate outside the strict confines of the law. This predicament enables the Chinese authorities to have leverage over these entities, effectively using legal ambiguities as a bargaining chip. Should these foreign investors or enterprises deviate from the directives of the Chinese government, they face the imminent threat of legal action and potential imprisonment. The crackdown on due diligence companies earlier this year exemplifies this. In March, China suddenly raided the US Mints Group and arrested five Chinese employees. In May, they searched the offices of research company Capvision in various parts of China, unilaterally accusing it of being an accomplice of foreign organizations. Chinese employees of the company's foreign department were not allowed to leave China. At the same time, senior employees of the American consultancy Kroll and the Japanese financial firm Nomura Holdings were prohibited from leaving China. This raised concerns about the Chinese government's increasing exit bans on foreign capital companies. Regarding this issue, former Beijing lawyer Lai Jianping told the media that there are problems with Chinese law itself and even more so in its enforcement. He said, for the anti-espionage law, espionage acts are supposed to have a defined scope. However, after recent amendments, the scope of what is considered espionage has been expanded, but the boundaries of these new definitions are vague. This means that determining espionage acts by a company is highly subjective. If there is a clear subjectivity, then the law is not open, transparent or predictable. Any actor does not know whether their behavior will violate Chinese anti-espionage law or the data law, etc., facing significant personal safety risks. Lai Jianping also stated that the Chinese government often takes political considerations into account during law enforcement. In fact, all law enforcement agencies in China are seen as tools to maintain the Chinese Communist Party's regime. Therefore, in the process of law enforcement, it is not purely about the law or making decisions based on the law. It is political. This means the law in China is highly politicized, he emphasized. The Chinese government can subjectively make determinations during law enforcement when it politically needs to be tightened control or crack down on foreign investors. It interprets the law as having no boundaries, turning it into a tool for arbitrary accusations, a man-made fig leaf. The recent unexplained disappearances of two Chinese corporate executives validate Lai Jianping's statements. Several media outlets have reported that Chen Xiaojie, chairman and the CEO of Douyu, a live streaming platform listed on NASDAQ has been missing for about three weeks. The company has refused to comment on Chen Xiaojie's situation but stated that business operations remain normal. Shandong Wuhua Pharmaceutical listed in Shenzhen stated that its chairman Zhao Bingsheng 
has been detained and requested to cooperate with an investigation. In a recent company document submitted by Wu Hua, the company did not provide details about the investigation but stated that it was not involved and Chinese authorities have not notified or sought assistance from the company. In fact, the list of missing or detained Chinese executives is growing longer with Chen Xiaojie and Zhao Bingxian being just the latest. Among the missing Chinese executive investment banker Bao Fan have received the most attention. Baofan disappeared in February this year and has not appeared publicly since. In addition to legal sanctions, the Chinese government also implements internal controls on speech. Bloomberg recently obtained an internal memo from a Chinese company, China International Capital Corporation, CICC, which prohibits analysts from making negative comments on the Chinese economy in public or private settings. The memo also requires employees to avoid flaunting wealth, wearing luxury brand clothing or disclosing salary levels to third parties. The memo mentioned that CICC analysts must be extremely cautious when sharing views with clients outside China to reduce national security and political risk. When posting comments on social platforms, employees should be careful to avoid publishing or sharing politically sensitive content. Employees are also required to actively participate in Chinese Communist Party building activities, which typically involve studying the thoughts of the party's top leaders. CICC also asked analysts to avoid making statements inconsistent with government policies and to avoid sharing unpublished views or complete reports on WeChat focusing all posts on work-related matters. CICC's actions are a response to a post by China's Ministry of State Security on WeChat in early November accusing bearish investors of trying to shake the international community's confidence in investing in China attempting to provoke domestic financial turmoil. The Ministry of State Security claimed it would legally punish these bearish investors in their so-called criminal activities. This restriction of the flow of economic information under the guise of security, as well as raiding several international consulting firms and limiting financial data available to foreign enterprises may make China's economic situation even more opaque, posing greater risk for foreign investments at this time. In addition to the political sanctions imposed by the Chinese government, financial losses and control of capital within China are also reasons why foreign businesses are fleeing the country. Afsana Abeshlosh, founder and CEO of the Washington-based investment firm Rock Creek Group, confirmed in a media interview that, in fact, many people are withdrawing the money from China. They just haven't spoken about it publicly. They want to build their next factory elsewhere and then transfer the Chinese factory out. What we are seeing now is the beginning of a process of reducing external funds flowing into China. Beshloss also mentioned that although the Chinese government has provided many subsidies for industries, the current situation in China is not like a few years ago, when investors could assume that they could retrieve their investment in private Chinese companies after 10 years or more. The business environment under Xi Jinping's rule is increasingly making investors feel uncomfortable and uneasy. In fact, facing the current situation in China, even very successful private investors within the country are starting to invest in Chinese companies overseas, fearing that if they are too successful in China, they might replicate the fate of Alibaba's founder, Jack Ma. To mitigate the massive outflow of capital and the withdrawal of foreign enterprises, the Chinese government has recently been actively promoting measures to attract foreign investment back into the country. In August, China's internet regulatory authorities met with executives from dozens of international companies to ease their concerns about new data rules. In November, the Ministry of Commerce of China asked local governments to clear discriminatory policies against foreign enterprises to stabilize investment confidence. Beijing also promised better tax treatment for overseas companies and easier visa access for foreigners. However, the promise made by the Chinese side to these foreign enterprises are quite hollow, and foreign enterprises in China have already experienced promise fatigue. The opaque governance method of the Chinese government make it difficult to restore trust in foreign enterprises. On the one hand, the Chinese government arbitrarily searches foreign enterprises under the guise of national security and defines espionage acts at will under the anti-espionage law, while on the other hand, it tries to persuade foreign enterprises to invest in China again. These actions have hindered new investment projects of foreign enterprises in China and scared off many international investors. Fred Hu, founder and CEO of China's private equity firm, 
Primavera Capital Group recently stated at the Bloomberg New Economy Forum held in Singapore, Chinese entrepreneurs are now either low-key or bland, and the market sentiment is weak. As far as I have observed, the Chinese entrepreneurial community have never seen this sense of insecurity since 1978. Rob Carnell, Asia Pacific Research Head at ING, also said, The most destructive thing in China is the sudden regulatory changes. Once a business environment perception of enterprises is damaged, it is difficult to restore trust.